All right, everyone. Um, welcome to part one of uh, the cube exercise. And uh, we're just going to dive uh, straight in. So if you look at the area that uh, has the part one constructing a cube written on it, zoom in. Uh, what I usually do is just select that first um, part and zoom select with my middle mouse button. Um, if you don't have this setting already, you can select something and type ZS spacebar, which is an enter, or spacebar, which is in select. Um, like I have probably mentioned a couple, multiple times, uh, binding the ZS macro to your middle mouse button is the best uh, time saver. So you'll see, I start out with corner points that are, um, if I use the distance measure, are basically 10 units apart. Uh, so it's a cube 10 by 10 by 10 cube. Uh, to just kind of draw this, and I'll just delete this, uh, I'm using the point object, which is here on the upper left, single point. And uh, as uh, with a lot of these commands, when you hover over it, you'll see the left click does one command, the right click does another. Uh, the sort of left click does the single point, and the right click does multiple. So you can draw multiple points, etc., etc. Right. Now in this case, because we want this to be somewhat measured, I'll just use the single point command and you'll see the uh, text entry type for the command here up here as well. So you know, instead of coming here, you can just type point or begin to type point and it'll autocomplete. So I'll pop, plug one down there. Now to get this, obviously you can use the gumball if your gumball's on. Uh, here uh, and just sort of click on the red arrow and 10 type in 10 in the entry box and enter uh, that kind of moves it now if I want to copy it then you have to hold down the alt key while clicking and then 10 which will make a copy now I tend not to use that actually I uh, just uh, select stuff and then use the copy command for, for in my case is binded bind to uh, the C and I click anywhere or you can click on a point it doesn't really matter and I just sort of drag it in the direction I want and say 10. Okay so that's four on the ground floor on, on the ground already right and uh, here we can alt click on the blue area uh, or I can use the copy vertical which is C and then it has uh, after I execute the copy command, I get the vertical option here, right? So the shortcut, you can, obviously you can sort of move your mouse over and click on it, but uh, I often just go C spacebar, V spacebar, which changes the sort of vertical toggle to yes, right? Because generally using the keyboard just faster. And then I'll click anywhere. And this sort of forces me into what's called the uh, elevator mode, right? So it only goes in the Z direction. Uh, it'll snap to things. Uh, so be careful, but you just sort of want to move it upwards and type 10. And you'll see that this method actually allows you to do more than one copy. So if you're sort of doing more than one copy, then I can do 10 and put 20 and then 30 and 40. So you get a whole stack of these, right? But here I'm just looking for one copy. So I'll enter to finish the command. That's how you get that. Okay. So what you should do is sort of work progressively, just uh, similarly to how I am. And um, this will show you the command that you want to use. I'll point out where it is on the toolbars um, if, the, if it's sort of obvious, uh, but you can just sort of type that in as well. So that's here, the box, corner to corner height, right? And um, if I click that, then you basically snap. Make sure your snaps are on, right? And um, you might have to check, right? Your O snaps might not always be, you know, the same as mine, uh, especially. And this is actually now uh, what you see here. These are the snaps that I usually have on, and I'll turn them on and off depending on the situation. But usually, I just have these all on most of the time. The ends, the points, midpoints, intersections, uh, perpendiculars, and uh, vertexes, right? So. Uh, if you don't have your point snap on, then when you try to execute the command, uh, 
you'll see that you can't actually snap to the points, right? It'll only snap to endpoints, like the endpoints of a line segment, right? So make sure your point snap is on. Do the box command. So ask you for basically a sort of uh, ground uh, outline, right? But because this is already, we've already pre-drawn this, so you can just do that and snap to the points. Now, obviously, this command you can do text entry as well. So if I do it anywhere else here, I'll ask you for other corner of base or length, right? So I can actually type in ten, right? Which constrains one dimension by ten, and then the last dimension. 10, which would give you more or less the same results. Okay, so I am just moving this to kind of put them in a line. That's just an example to show you. Like there, a lot of these sort of things. There, uh, these commands have multiple ways of completing them. So you just have to look at your options um, in the command line. Right, make sure to kind of check that out. Plane, and then extrude surface. So the plane command that I'm using here, I actually have to pull out uh, in this sort of little triangle flyout in the surface creation. And it's this guy, rectangular plane, corner to corner. All right, so plane, as you can see, here to there. All right, so that's a plane. The extrude commands on the toolbar are sort of hidden in here. Um, they're in the sort of boxing and these, like this is extrude. So the plane of curve, extrude surface, but then there's more, right? It's generally the sort of pain in the butt to get to uh, all of these. So I usually just type them in. So extrude. So extrude surface and uh, so that, all right? Enter and then how high you want to extrude it. So obviously you can actually snap to the points here. Uh, these should be your default toggles. If not, then they might be a little bit different, right? So if it's not solid, uh, it will actually extrude with an open end. If it's solid, then it will basically close it automatically, etc, etc. But uh, just if you're getting something strange or different, then check that your sort of uh, options are the same as mine. So that's a box. Now, the one thing to kind of note uh, in terms of these sort of operators, uh, this sort of way you're building up things is that when you extrude stuff like this, the original piece of geometry is still there, right? So this plane is still there, it's still in place. Which sometimes can cause confusion for people because you'll have basically the box surface and another poly surface or the original surface and the poly surface of the box basically sort of on top of each other, right? So, depending, sometimes I'll either put this surface on a different, you know, construction line or sort of trash layer, uh, or I'll just delete it uh, if I know I'm not going to use it afterwards, right? Just to kind of keep your file clean, right? That's just something that, you know, sometimes you should, it's, it's a good idea uh, to do. So, what you should be doing as you're kind of doing this is to not to build everything in place but basically move things out of the way so I'm going to move this upwards 20 so I see the first step and the second step okay so next this is a polyline and then um, extrude uh, with a cap or solid and this actually is an updated sort of uh, word the wording for it is solid. So to do that, uh, polyline is the command. Although in my case, my shortcut key is L. Uh, I've just changed the L to polyline because there's almost no good reason why you shouldn't be drawing with polylines in, uh, instead of uh, normal lines. So click, 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 click and it closes automatically, <clears throat> All right? Extrude, instead of surface, uh, the one you want is extrude curve. And then I wanna select those curves, enter, and same thing, 
you know, 10, you can just type in 10 or you can snap to uh, the points if you want to, right? So in this case, uh, I can, for example, and I'll kind of provide the framework uh, for you to do so. So you can actually do that, just move it out, or you can do the same, just move the cube 20 units in that direction. So I see, you see the polyline and you see that. So this is, uh, the next one is the surface points, <coughs> which is actually this first guy here, surface from three or four corner points, the Texas SRF, SRF point, surface points. After I execute the command, you basically go through and pick one, two, three, and you'll see this is basically, it makes a NURB surface um, based off of either three, which makes a triangle, or four points that you give it. All right, let's copy it over to the next step. And then extrude surface. So extrude surface, right? Click that surface, do the same. Okay. All right? Next one um, is actually surface points. And um, this is one thing that it's actually a good habit uh, for you guys, especially if you're sort of developing a model as you go along and you're trying to develop different versions or variations. That in, instead of sometimes instead of making change to the original model, I copy multiple and do the changes on multiple different sort of uh, iterations uh, of a model. Uh, it's it's really helpful in terms of uh, iterating. So in this case, uh, we're actually going to build up the cube from just that one command, the surface point command. Okay, so the first thing obviously is this one, two, three, four. Let's build the ground. Okay, and I'm just going to copy this sort of as we go. Whoops. All right, surface point again, and actually let's build one of these sides. And uh, sort of rotate it so you're not snapping to the wrong things, right, um, by accident. So for this step, let's build these two sides. Now, it really helps to have these points there as a sort of framework to help you know where you're um, trying to snap to, right? So let's uh, select these three, holding down the shift key to multiple select. And this time I will hold down the alt key while clicking on the green arrow to make it a duplicate type 20 which copies it over and then I'll continue and this time we're going to close up the sides like this here, here, there, there, okay now this is helpful also just sort of like help you practice, be more precise uh, actually in your mouse clicks, right? Now the way I generally, instead of like trying to click through, I, the way I select is just kind of get a good angle on things and then do the lower right to upper left crossing selection, right? So I basically cross select everything. Uh, I'm getting the sort of outer boundary as well, so I'll hold down the control key to deselect that and uh, make sure I get the bottom as well, so click again on the bottom, right? It'll highlight the sort of isocurse of what you're sort of selecting, okay? Do the alt copy trick again, 20. So there you go. And let's just close off the top. All right, so now I have six surfaces that are like this, right? I can select them all and then join them. So join, which makes them into the cube or the box instead of, you know, individual surfaces. Okay. Okay. Next one, line, extrude, and then extrude with direction. You'll see what I mean um, really quickly. <clears throat> So <clears throat> I'll delete these lines first. So line, just draw a line simply from here to here on the ground. Okay, extrude. So let's uh, 
make the let's say the uh, walls first okay so this example is actually here to kind of show you that you can control um, the direction of an extrude command so extrude uh, curve select curves to extrude this one and this one and by default it should go up and down right it should move in the vertical directions so you want to do that Okay, so you get those two. Now let's just copy this over. I use the copy command, copy it over. Okay. Let's do extrude curve again. Now this time, um, I'm actually not going to select one of the curves that we had, but I'm actually going to select one of the curves on the side of the surface that we created. So these two guys, the one on the left and the right. And by default, no, anything that's orthogonal or vertical, it will actually guess in what direction you want to extrude this. So we can do that. Okay. And this is just sort of uh, here to kind of, kind of uh, show you the behavior uh, that this actually exhibits. Okay. Extrude curve again. Um, this time, let's say if we pick this one and any that one and it will go sort of in the horizontal direction so we can actually you can type 10 or just sort of close it off by snapping to that all right and same thing so uh, you can click three times there and I'm just sort of showing you different ways that you know I tend to go around and to sort of select things if I want. Copy it over. All right. And then this last thing, because these are all sort of uh, individual surfaces, uh, this is actually a selection filter I use a lot up here. Uh, these are the selection filters of the selection sets. Uh, this sort of thing that has a sort of sparkly thing on it, the shiny new thing, is select last created objects, right? So when you copy something, these are the last created objects. So I select that. So it will select whatever you just copied basically. And then I'll join those. So J spacebar or join. Okay. All right. Now this example is just to show you uh, the loft command. So same thing. I'll delete those first two. Polyline. And I'll just draw one, two, three, or and this sort of last step you can actually do that or you can actually just use the close option so C spacebar just closes it regardless of you know what sort of shape you're drawing so if I'm doing something like this and I do C spacebar it closes it right um, okay copy this upwards to that point right so then, you know, this is just there, so I already have it. Loft, L-O-F-T, select curve to loft, bottom, top, right? Enter. And uh, it says drag seam point, just make sure that these are facing the same direction and they're on the same corner, okay? So enter, and you'll get this sort of dialog box. Uh, this is the simple dialog box. We'll go into more about like all of the different options uh, a little bit later, but just make sure that it's normal and say okay. Okay, so that's a loft. Basically, it takes two sort of cross section curves and figures out how they want to connect together. And then uh, the last, and I'll just sort of copy this over. Step is to select this open uh, sort of four-sided thing and to cap it cap which closes the volume okay line sweep one and then cap so this is a polyline this is a vertical line so same thing close then I'm going to draw a line from the sort of top left vertex to the vertically, like that. Okay. 
So sweep, there are two sweeps. The one we're gonna do is sweep one. So sweep one asks you for a rail, which is this thing on the bottom, and then asks you for cross-section curve, which is this vertical thing. Enter, and you'll get this um, option dialog. So in this dot option dialog, just leave everything um, the default, which is this, and say OK. OK, move this to the second step. And then let's copy this over. And same thing, tap it. OK, now the sweep one um, command is specifically actually used for a little bit more complicated things like So I'm just uh, showing you guys this uh, so you get an idea. So this is a sort of complex rail with a complex uh, cross section. And um, actually usually this wants to be put on a side that's sort of more, let's say, towards the middle. <coughs> Okay, so the sweep, set rail, set cross section curve. So you see it's sort of used for, you know, things that are more like this that you can construct out of, you know, a, something with a weird profile um, <clears throat> that follows you know, a sort of normal base surface. But yeah, you'll try to avoid that. But this is basically usually what the, the sweep command is for, right? Just a little quick detour. Okay, so you saw earlier you can loft between closed sections like this. In this case, you can loft between simple line sections as well. So here, uh, we'll show you this really quick. So uh, sometimes, you know, the loft command, you can execute it first and then pick the curves that you want, or you can actually just pre-select them like I did here select them first and then type the loft command and it'll automatically do sort of run through the command because you've already, you've already pre-selected something so let's do that okay if I copy this over and then I'll do the next step so if you already have curves, you can pre-select. If you don't, then you actually have to run the command first and then pick the curve that you want to loft. So, right? So run the loft command, pick curves, enter, OK, then do that. Copy that over. Loft. Oops. So this is an example where the curve directions are flipped in a loft command because one curve is going this direction, the other curve is going that direction. So when you try to connect the ends, it basically does this, a sort of bow tie. Um, so you will either have to flip the direction of one of the curves or in here, you have to go to the align curves option, basically click on one of the corners and say enter uh, to fix it and then say okay right so that happens that's how you fix it uh, then you have the bottom one then we can go with any of these curves it really doesn't matter say okay pick and sort of bear in mind that if you do, you know, a crossing or a boundary selection that you will also select a lot of the curves that were in place, right? Because there are curves here. There's a couple of surfaces. Um, 
here and here, and there's a there's basically a curve here right on the ground, right? So you know, just so just that you know you either sort of when you're modeling that you try to either separate your geometries on different layers or um, you delete them sort of as you go. Okay. So we can obviously uh, take those faces that you just created and join them into one cube. All right, last a little bit. Polyline, planar surface, join and cap. So this is the polyline, okay? Uh, I won't sort of redo this, you already know how to do this. Planar surface, which is this guy here, the second sort of little rounded guy, or planar, whoops, planar surface, planar surface here, select the curve, enter, and it just makes it, right? you can, or you can uh, pre-select it, and then run the command, it does the same thing, all right? So, in this case, you'll see that uh, instead what I sort of do um, is I actually go through and I construct your surface and just using the polyline command and uh, let me just delete these right by using the polyline command oh. I can basically trace the sides, uh, close it, and then run click on the planar surface to make that as well. Right. So you can do that, and then you can you know sort of just like copy these over. Right. So you'll see there is multiple ways of really doing this, but just show us your steps. Show the steps that you're making when you're doing this. I can also insert, I know this is a cube, right? So I can copy that, uh, rotate this like 90 degrees, for example, and then move this back over here instead of redoing all of that, right? And then just sort of copy that over to that end. And I'm just going to drag this out the side. It makes selecting it easier, right? So I can join this without having to, you know, select everything one by one. So you'll, you'll, you'll sort of develop your own uh, workarounds, uh, if you will. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, sort of 10 ways to skin a box. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one.